and we will be discussing the clay making process from start to finish. See? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Do It, it Yourself, Yourself Sis. I'm Yama. I'm One. And today we will be working with a very brilliant clay artist. His name is Adam Ledford. And we will be discussing the clay making process from start to finish. And we're gonna get hands on and craft some pretty designs on this pot and this. Yama, this, what is this? this is like it's gonna be a secret holder. <gasps> Secret That's holder. what we're gonna call it. What kind of secret? <laughs> I don't know. So, Adam was so generous with us uh, today by gifting us these. And uh, without further ado, meet our featured artist, Adam Ledford. Hi y'all, my name is Adam Ledford. Uh, I'm a potter and a teacher, and I live in Philadelphia. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at Adam Ledford Ceramics, and uh, you can find me on my Etsy account at Adam Ledford, and I'm gonna make some pots. So, I'm gonna show you how to make a vase. So right now I'm centering the clay, I'm coning it. This is like the ghost moment from the, the famous movie. And this is getting the clay kind of like exercise, turning it inside and out um, so that the whole thing is like homogenous, evenly um, distributed. If you don't do this step, you'll end up with like cords of really stiff clay throughout the, the body of the pot that you make and you'll mess yourself up. This is centering, it's the hardest part, it, what, it comes first. And when you're learning how to throw, this is where a lot of your struggles are for the first few years. How long did it take you to master wheel throwing? So I started throwing pots pretty regularly when I was a sophomore in high school. So that's what? That's 10th grade, so I was about 15. I'm 33 now, so... Uh, but it took me about six years before I felt like I could make something every time I went to the wheel. I wouldn't have off days where I wasn't able to get the clay together. So it takes a lot of time to get enough like muscle memory and skills to sort of like not throw yourself off all the time. And then of course after I felt like I could finally make something every time I used the wheel, I promptly uh, started making things in a different way for the, like the next 10 years. Um, but throwing is a nice way to make sort of pots the size like a bread box, nothing too big. Um, for me, if I'm gonna make something really big like the, those pots behind me, or when I was in school I was making pieces like six feet tall, three feet wide, and I would do that with a punch and coil technique. But throwing is nice for things like cups, bowls, flower bases. And that's a quicker process than doing a pinch pot. It's not as hard on my hands. Mm. The, the punch and coil techniques requires a lot of strength in your fingers. And uh, it takes a little bit longer for smaller stuff. Also the key to body, um, like repetitive body strain, is just to keep on mixing it up. So maybe in the next five years I'll have to change my practice to something else so that I uh, can strain different parts of my body. But then pushing the clay in to make it go up, pushing it down to make it go out, using specific parts of my hands to really put my force, let, let my force be, uh, I guess, more most forceful. So I use like just like the line of my hand on here and the line of my hand here and here to apply pressure. You're gonna feel it being centered more than you're gonna see it. But when it's completely centered, it'll look like it's just spinning around in the wheel like like it's not moving. Adam, do you like doing it standing up versus sitting down? Because I've often seen people do it sitting down. Yeah, so I throw standing up because uh, I have like back pain. I have like lower back pain. And so standing up allows me to not hurt my back as much when I'm throwing. Okay. So when you're sitting down, your body is like this. You're yeah. hunched over. Um, so standing up's a lot better for um, body pain. Yeah, most people um, 
in the U.S. set when they grew up. So what got you into clay and clay throwing as a 15 year old? I was lucky as a kid, I got to go to different kinds of art um, centers. So like when I was like a, like a third and fourth grader, I did like interpretive dance classes. Oh nice. So you can tell that when I'm dancing. <laughs> And I did a little bit, of, I did like painting and like different kind of art center art classes, but my my mom signed me and my little brother and my father up for like a Saturday pottery class at a community studio in Springfield, Missouri is like a nice thing to do with my father. Um, and it just kind of stuck. I really liked it. And I did it when I moved to the East Coast. And I eventually, like when I was like refusing to apply to colleges, was like finally encouraged to apply to Tyler School of Art. What really, I think, got me, and I didn't necessarily have the words for this when I was doing it, but working with the clay is like, it is a struggle. You really have to kind of like force it into shape, and uh, there's a lot of failure, but that's sort of, you, you kind of can have control over something, and I think definitely working with young people, and people that kind of feel like they don't have control over their bodies all the time, like, when you succeed in the clay, it's like you turn this nothing into something. Yeah. It only happened because of you and sort of your skills and your kind of, you put your energy into it and you changed it. And that's a really sort of gratifying feeling. So I got this centered. I'm going to start opening it up. Like the centering process often takes longer than anything else. And when we're learning how to do this, everyone always wants to skip that part because it's hard. Working on the wheel is a little different than most things in life. Like, we're often taught that we can make things better if we just keep on working on it. You can just keep on putting your energy into it and you can fix it. But on the wheel, the clay will get too soft or it'll just be too soft, but also just kind of get knocked out of center. And a lot of times you're better off taking what you learned from one piece and kind of moving on to another one. You can't always fix everything. Sometimes you got to move on and try again. and we'll draw out our designs. Okay. The pencil will burn away. We'll paint on it with the underglazes, apply a quick layer of wax, and then dunk them in the uh, bucket of glazes and clean them up and then we can put them in the kiln. Oh wow. So Fire how long does this process normally just takes in general so from start to finish? I tend to work in like a couple week series. So I'll throw pots and trim pots and finish them, uh, let them dry, bake them in the kiln, and then uh, gather a bunch of those up, and then I'll do a bunch of decorating and painting. But the whole thing stretches out over the course of a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. the, how much does it shrink down? Hmm. So the clay shrinks uh, like 15%, and uh, the porcelain clay that I use shrinks more like 20 something percent. So Adam, can you tell us um, what the kids are working on right now? We are getting close to the end of our classes, but we are going to be making skulls this Saturday. Some spooky stuff going down. We've made uh, mugs, we've made portraits, we had a really good portrait of uh, Mario coming out of the tunnel. Um, <laughs> we've made animals and monsters. Hi Adam, so what inspires your work? The kind of pots that inspire me can be everything from like stuff from a thrift store to like, um, I'm really into like historical pottery and I've done a lot of like research in different museum collections around uh, the U.S. and some international museum collections to kind of look at cool old pots. But I'm kind of thinking about kind of like talismans and omens and ways that we can kind of like 
shoo away bad energy and only attract the good mm -hmm. or um, um, definitely playing with sort of like more popular kind of like American imagery like, like cut up snakes like the don't tread on me snake but also the Ouroboros like the snake eating itself but also kind of like images that are a little bit more open to people I don't want to necessarily tell people the story that they have to mm -hmm. have to create do you have any ideas or recommendations you would give for people that's like in your in your field that's struggling trying to sell their artwork one of the most important things to do is to use your network kind of like spend the time to make sure the pots you're putting out are are good that they have like that they that they work well definitely use the pots that you make folks that make work but then never sort of experience that they don't fit in a dishwasher or um wow that's amazing i didn't even think about that like the practicality there's a lot of like lived experience that you want to make sure that your pieces um do the job well in someone's home be confident in what you're doing put yourself out there and um don't let perfect be the enemy of done mm. that's something i did a lot of being so afraid that my like images weren't the best quality that you know my sort of style wasn't quite there or something and i kind of held back a lot and i would really recommend people you know you don't have to put everything that you do up on the internet in fact probably save your best stuff for your promotion but don't let um that idea of like having like perfect most professional what someone else is doing stop you from trying to put yourself out there yeah i mean the, the most important thing is like you got to be sort of self-motivated no matter what yeah. I just want to thank you so much for teaching us like and follow us. Make sure you comment and subscribe as well. We'll have all Adam's information bio linked below.